This is Troy from Silver Group. Thank you for purchasing one of our 37 EFI water jetters. We're going to take a look now at this jetter and what it has on it, and then the starting and stopping procedures, and then how it sets up on site. So here we have our drain tap for the drain of your um, water tank. You've got your fuel filter, you've got your fuel pump, we have your the oil fill point for topping up your engine oil. This is your dipstick for checking your engine oil level. You've got your on off key here. You've got your main pressure gauge, which gives you your operation pressure. You've got your ball valve on and off for operation. That isolates this, re this reel here. So this reel here is your main feed, your jetting reel, um, which runs out to your mini reel. You've got your garden feed reel that fills up your tank. You've got an E stop here. You've got your throttle on and off there. You've got your battery system in here. Your oil filter there. Inbuilt 150 litre water tank, which fills up from your garden feed reel. You have your fuel tank here with your filler point on the top there. And on this side, you've got your sight glass for your fuel as well. And the standard set of accessories that come with this machine is the remote mini reel. So you've got 60 metres a quarter inch jetting hose on this mini reel. You've got your gauge at the front, which gives you your operation and maximum shutoff pressure. You've got your ball valve, which is on and off on your mini reel. You've got a jetting safety sign. You have a 15 metre whip hose, which is 1 8. This is mostly designed and used to go down 40 and 50 mil. So this is all your inside work. So your floor waste, kitchen sinks, toilet bowls, and we always use that on the trigger gun. So your quick connector goes in this side and then your nozzle goes down the drain, pull the trigger, you've got pressure, let the trigger go and you've got no pressure. That's just a safety feature of using the gun and the whip hose together. So you're not trying to shut a ball valve when you're using the whip hose in someone's bathroom. Um, the nozzle kit that comes with it is our standard Rutex nozzle kit. So you've got your spinning rotation root cutter, which we all know is the Rutex nozzle. You've got a reducing bush which reduces it from 3 8 down to quarter inch because your mini reel has a quarter inch swage on it. You've got the mini bomb nozzle, which is a flushing head. This head is mainly used to flush, flush out. It's got six rear jets, one front jet. You've got your chisel point. That's the one that you use when you first get to the choke to bust a hole through the choke to let the water out. Then you can start up your either your flushing head or your root cutting head, depending on what situation you're in. Then you have the micro nozzle. That's the shortest possible head. So if you've got a choke where um, from the tip of the ferrule to the tip of the nozzle is too long, by the time you've put that onto the end of your ferrule, it's the shortest possible option. So if you're getting through a very tight bend where the root choke is right on the bend, or you can't, you're trying to get through a junction, that's the best nozzle to use to get through for, the, for those sort of situations. So to start the machine, before you start, you must always make sure you've got a tank full of water. So you run this out to your garden tap, turn it on, make sure your valve here is on the inline position, not in the off, um, and definitely not on drain because you'll drain the water tank as you're trying to fill it up. So that's got to be that way. You've got to make sure you've got your throttle, which is around this side. You want that set at about half or just above half, and your e-stop must be out for the machine to start. So before you start, water in, water on, full tank of water. Once you've got a full tank of water, your main valve must be in the open position. Um, so in line is open and cross line is off. So if you try and start the machine with the valve off, you're trying to pressurize the, the system, which puts strain on the starter motor um, and flattens your battery. So you make sure you've got that in the open position. Just hold the main hose in your hands and then you can start your jetter either two ways. You can do it on your remote start or on your key start here. Once you've started and you've got your revs up above half, you can close that valve. And then what that does is puts it in bypass so it's pumping water back through the tank. So then you can undo your clip on your, on your reel around this side. So if we just undo that clip there, then that allows you to walk your your jet hose out to where you're doing, going to set up on your job. So let's just say now the machine's running. I've got the ball valve closed, so there's no pressure coming out this side of the hose. It's bypassing back through the tank. The next thing I would do is undo the clip so I can reel that out to my mini reel. You want to remember once you've reeled it out to the mini reel, you've got to come back 
and set that clip back into lock. Now the reason we have to do that is, every time you close and open the mini reel valve, it's gonna spin this reel this way and that way and coils of hose are just gonna fall off the side of the reel and make a mess. It's just not worth when you're trying to pack up again. So always remember to come back and lock your reel in place. Once you're back in place, you can set full rev. Then you can come around to your ball valve and you can open this ball valve. Now once that's open, that's sending charge down to your mini reel. Now if you're at your mini reel, you must remember to leave this valve closed and make sure you've got no nozzles on here. So if you forget that and you've got a nozzle on here and you forget to make sure this valve's closed, you could be 60 meters away, open your main valve and then you've got pressure coming out of here and you're not even close to, to it, you can't even turn it off, you don't even know that it's going off. So always remember, this valve's shut, when you connect it onto here, this valve has to be closed, no nozzles on before you go back to the machine to open your main valve and send charge down to this reel here. So now let's say that I've set up, I've got my main hose connected to my mini reel, I've connected on my safety lanyard so if this fitting fails, I can't fling out and hurt anybody. I've made sure that this valve is closed, I've opened my main reel, I've locked the main reel, I've now got 5,000 PSI sitting on this gauge if the machine was on. So to start jetting, I would select the head that I want to use. The first head that I would always use normally is the chisel point. The reason I use the chisel point first is it's got four front jets, four rear jets, but it's a penetrating head. So when you first get to the choke, um, you want to let the water out first so you can obviously be more efficient with your other heads and essentially get the um, root axe or your root cutter down to the choke. So we normally just screw them straight on. You can use Teflon or you can use a dowdy washer. Um, a lot of people ask me why we don't have quick connectors on our nozzles. Now, the reason I don't like quick connectors on our nozzles is because it makes the nozzle about 25 mil longer already um, as screwing it on directly. So you can imagine if I've screwed that onto there, I've only got about 35 to 40 mil of steel um, that doesn't bend, obviously. So by the time I've got a quick connector tail into the end of my nozzle, and then I've got a quick connector on the end of my ferrule, and then I quick connect that in, that's now become, you know, almost 30 or 40 mil longer than having to screw that directly onto there. So that's why I don't like quick connects. If you want quick connects, we can get them. Just ask one of our sales team, that's an easy thing to fix. But usually I would always screw my heads straight onto the ferrule. It just makes it shorter and much easier to use and to get through bends. So after we've penetrated the choke, you could, either, you could then select either the mini bomb or the root axe, depending on what situation you're in. If it's a heavy root choke, well then the root axe is obviously gonna be the best solution. If you're in a sand and silt or just a rubble build up, well then you can just use the mini bomb. Um, there is also the, in this kit, you've got the Rutax oil and the syringe. Now, each time you use this head, it is always good to make sure that you top the oil up or make sure you've got fresh oil. If it's not every use, every third use. How to do that is to undo the Allen key on the side, get a screwdriver and pop off this rear retaining O-ring, inject the oil into that, takes about nearly eight mils. You just push it in there and push the oil through all the old oil will ooze at the top. Um, you wipe it down, put that screw back in, and you've always make sure that this head is well lubed, um, which I think we've already covered in another video on, on one of our channels already. So thank you again for purchasing one of our 37 EF5 Hornet water jetters. Here's your owner's manual. In this owner's manual, it does cover almost all of what I've said. So you've got your, your general safety concerns, some safety warnings about high pressure water jetting, You've got accident reporting, you've got your medical alert card, specifications of the machine, you've got the safe operation, the operation procedure which I've covered in this video. If you're using two people you've got some simple hand signals of pressure up, pressure down, depressurized system, you've got your selection of nozzles and what each of them do which I've explained already as well. You've got a safety warning about your unloader and safety valves. You've got your personal protection equipment that is suggested that you do wear, which includes head protection, eye protection, leg and body protection, hand protection, 
foot and lower leg protection and hearing protection. Now, you can buy a Class B water jetting safety pack. If you want that, you can go onto our website and have a look or call one of our staff and we'll explain what that is. Here is a general troubleshooting table. So there's the fault, there's the possible cause, and there's the remedy. So if something goes wrong, if you don't want to ring us, you can just look at this table. If it's fluctuating pressure, there's a few things about what it could be, and there's a few things here about what you can do to fix it. Or you can, alternatively, you can call our office and one of our sales people will help you anyway. You've got your service schedule. So you've got your first one at 50 hours or six months, and then every 150 hours thereafter. You've got your warranty certificate, which must be filled out to retain your warranty. So before, this, you would have got this before we've sent the machine, but you need this signed out and sent back to our office to retain your warranty. And then you've got your Brutax owner's manual, which covers how to service the, the Brutax nozzle, which I've showed you before as well with the oil, but it's in, it's in more detail in this book. So thank you again for purchasing with us. We hope you enjoy the water jetter, and we'll look forward to helping you with any questions if you have them later on.